Hi everyone, it's Brittany. I am going to go ahead and record my biggest challenges video. We were posed with the question, what are the biggest challenges that you face in your current role or perhaps in your future role? Right now I am the technology teacher, but next year I will transition to a classroom teacher and I will be teaching fifth grade. Therefore, I chose to focus on three challenges that I think that I will face as a fifth grade teacher. Challenge number one, not having enough time to create meaningful opportunities for technology integration. Currently as a tech lab teacher, my sole focus is to teach my students digital citizenship skills, keyboarding, and how to use their iPad for creation and knowledge demonstration. However, transitioning into a fifth grade position next year, I will focus on teaching reading, writing, math, and social studies content. This drastic switch in subject matter causes me to worry that I will not have enough time to integrate technology in a meaningful way. Some solutions that I've come up with create informal assessment opportunities for students to demonstrate their knowledge, whether they do this through a seesaw check or creating an Adobe Spark post or video or using an app like Notability to demonstrate um, interactive notes that they've taken while we are talking about a subject. I can also use apps like Notability again to keep track of their running records for reading. I can use Seesaw for morning messages or warm-ups, and I can use apps for adaptations like Epic to read text aloud or Notability to type instead of writing with a pencil. Some ISTE standards that I believe apply to this are the ISTE standard for educators, um, standard five, section A, and that is to use technology to create, adapt, and personalize learning experiences that foster independent learning and accommodate learner differences and needs. I think that this standard applies because I am using apps such as Epic or Notability to apply accommodations to students that may need some special um, circumstances for when we are doing reading or writing or math. Another standard that I believe applies is the ISTE standard for educators, standard five, section B, which says design authentic learning activities that align with content area standards and use digital tools and resources to maximize active deep learning. <coughs> I believe that this standard applies because it's allowing the students to take what they learned through our class and demonstrate that knowledge. And when they're able to demonstrate knowledge in a way that they are interested in and that makes them happy, then that learning is going to become more meaningful and impactful. Finally, I believe that Educator Standard 7, Section A, provide alternative ways for students to demonstrate competency and reflect on their learning using technology also applies to this because again, I'm allowing students to meet the requirements of our instructional lesson, but doing it in a way that makes sense to them and in a way that really captures their ideal way of learning and demonstrating their knowledge. The second challenge that I believe I will face is the subsequent troubles associated with our declining battery life of student equipment. This year, we have started to see a significant increase in the number of iPads that cannot hold a charge. Students will plug in their iPads at the end of the day and within the first hour of school the next morning, their iPads are down to 20% battery life. This poses a significant efficiency issue when our classrooms are ill-equipped with outlets. Ideally, it would be nice to have a charging station for each pod or a group of desks, but I'm not quite certain that I can make that happen without upsetting the fire marshal or spending a large sum of money. So the decline in battery life on student iPads will challenge me to either restructure the timing of my lessons that utilize technology or rework the layout of my classroom. Some solutions that I've come up with this for this are, like I said, rework the layout of my classroom to allow for charging stations at each pat, pod or group of desks, and then use my home and school money, which is usually around $350 a year, to purchase charging stations, power cords, and cord covers for the floor. Or another option that I came up with is that I can apply for grants to buy wireless charging stations, which would allow for my seating options to be more flexible, and it would minimize the trip hazard that cords can often provide in classrooms. Um, finally, the last solution that I came up with for that was I could have 
a designated iPad charger student at each table or group that would be in charge of plugging in the iPads when we are not using them. In terms of ISTE standards that apply to this, I chose the ISTE standard for coaches standard three, section E, and that says to troubleshoot basic software, hardware, and connectivity problems that are common in digital learning environments. I believe that this applies because I am trying to troubleshoot a way to make our iPads more effective and more um, efficient. I also chose the ISTE Coaches standard, sec, uh, standard 3, Section F, which was collaborate with teachers and administrators to select and evaluate digital tools and resources that enhance teaching and learning and are compatible with the school technology infrastructure. I put this standard on there in case I need to apply for grants to purchase more expensive charging options. Then I'll know that I'm working with other teachers in my building and administrators to find the best technology to use that will also work well with our technology infrastructure in our school. Finally, the last challenge that I anticipate having is um, having to report inappropriate technology use to parents and administrators. In my current position, if I encounter an issue with students using technology inappropriately, I automatically take the matter to the principal. From there, she will determine the resulting consequences and will contact the parents. However, in my new position next year, I will be expected to take on more of a leadership role. I will need to handle these types of situations with students and parents respectfully and appropriately. Inappropriate technology use is inevitable, but how I handle the situation and communicate with the parents is crucial. So some of the solutions that I've come up with this for this challenge are more things that would be preventative measures. So for example, having an internet safety pledge established. You know, one of the first days in school, we talk about how this iPad is here for them to use to learn and to enhance their learning and to demonstrate what they're learning, how it's not to be used for anything inappropriate. We would have a pledge that they would read and they would actually sign that pledge stating that they understand what the iPads are used for. <coughs> I would also create a contract with the students. Um, and I think creating the contract with the students would help it be more enforceable because they would understand the consequences of their actions. So for example, for the first offense, maybe they would have a verbal warning and I would contact the parents and let them know what happened just because I believe that communication is going to be key in any kind of situation that might seem kind of tricky with parents and students. If the offense were to happen again, they would have to fill out a stop and think sheet, and I would contact the parents and my principal. And if a third offense happened, then I would work with the principal to determine um, an appropriate amount of suspension from the iPad, and I would contact the parents as well. Um, I think that con communicating with the parents in each of these offenses is important because I need to establish a rapport with my parents I need to build those open and honest lines of communication. And lastly, the standards that I believe tie to this are ISTE standards for educators, standard three, section A, create experiences for learners to make positive, socially responsible contributions and exhibit empathetic behavior online that builds relationships and communities. Um, again, these standards are more preventative because I feel that if I can effectively establish good digital citizenship skills in my students, that a lot of these issues will hopefully be prevented or will be minimized. I also chose ISTE standards for educators, standard three, section C, mentor students in the safe, legal, and ethical practice with digital tools and the protection of their rights and property. And then I also chose ISTE standards for coaches, section or standard one, section A, contribute to the development, communication, and implementation of a shared vision for the comprehensive use of technology to support a digital age education for all students. I chose this last coach standard because I believe that it ties in well with creating a pledge and creating student contracts. So that's everything for the challenges that I anticipate for next year. I'm hoping I don't face many of these, but I feel well prepared if I do. Thank you.